Hello, my name is Ola, and uh, I started Fertility Conversations to raise awareness about infertility in Nigeria and also to create a safe space where people can connect with others going through something similar and people that understand them. In my community, we all expect it to become moms. So if you do get married, you'll hear comments from friends and family saying that we're coming back in nine months to celebrate the birth of your baby or babies. So yes, no pressure at all. If you're still waiting or trying in by the second year, you'll start hearing comments reminding you not to wait too long. Comments asking you to uh, relax, uh, reminding you to take your vitamins and opinions about how to make this happen. If by the third year or longer you're still waiting, the comments will get louder. Um, everyone will have an opinion about how to make it happen. Lots of ignoring comments. It's not uncommon to have someone even tell you that your husband might go outside to have a baby with someone else. So look, don't wait too long. In our case, we've been trying for over six years. So of course the comments have been pretty loud. Um, but I found responses, pre-planned responses to common questions or comments. Comments like, what are you waiting for? Why is it taking you so long? You're not getting any younger, you know, and other comments like that. Um, and some of the times I just ignore them because it's just easier. And other times I smile and say thank you because that's what's best for that specific situation. For us, we've had multiple pregnancy losses and some with uh, life-threatening complications. We have explored fertility treatments, IVF to be uh, specific. We've had treatments here in Nigeria, in the UK and other uh, European countries because we also have many genetic testing. So we do need to explore a lot of um, options that are available to us. Currently, because of COVID-19 pandemic, there are a lot of travel restrictions and it does impact uh, our cycle because we'll be cycling overseas. And that's the thing about infertility. Uh, not only is it stressful by itself, but then you also realize a lot of things are not in your control. Many times I've said this time next year for sure, by this month, by this date, and then the pandemic happens, for example, and the whole of last year, we couldn't really travel. And this year, there's still some restrictions. So you realize lots of, lots of things are not within your control, but there are some things within your control. Um, currently, right now, we're focusing on eating properly because, you know, it's just Christmas and we eat a lot of foods that we shouldn't have, like ice cream, lots of cake. So... Yes, now we're focusing on eating properly, eating lots of fruits and vegetables, taking our supplements and just trying to get our mind in the right place. And as well, during this time, I'm focusing on raising awareness uh, through my um, Instagram and social media accounts, also having podcasts to have conversations that we need to increase awareness about. Because... We want to ensure that people know about egg freezing, let the youth know about their sexual health and the role that it can play on their fertility, uh, to let people know about fertility treatments. Again, sometimes in my society, people can say, well, you, you're playing God by doing IVF. But that's not the case, is it? Because infertility is a disease, and if you have any other disease or condition, you'll be encouraged to seek treatment. So why should it be different for infertility? So we need to increase awareness about that. We need to have conversations about egg donation, to sperm donation, embryo adoption, to talk about surrogacy, adoption, childless, not by choice. We need to have all this conversation because lots of people are dealing with it. In Nigeria, people say one in four are impacted by infertility. And in a country of over 200 million people, that's a whole lot of people that are potentially isolated, suffering in silence. And it doesn't help if no one is talking about it. So we need to have this conversation. So you don't have to uh, make a video. You don't have to be on social media, but you can talk to someone close to you. You can reach out to someone anonymously just to have somebody else to discuss uh, what you're experiencing. We also want to talk about male factor infertility. 
because women are the ones that get pregnant, people assume that if it's happening, it's because of the woman, and if it's not happening, it's because of the woman, and that's not true. Uh, infertility could be because of a man, because of a woman, or because of both of them. So it's important that we have these conversations, again, to stress the importance of people seeking treatment together, going to the clinics together and having investigations done on both uh, the man and the woman. So those uh, conversations are also very important. And just also to let people know that infertility doesn't define you. It's not because of something you've done wrong. It's not a punishment. It's not a sign that you're not supposed to be a parent. It's a disease. And really, you should seek treatment and explore the options that are available to you. Yes, the options might not be what you initially planned or envisioned for yourself, but there are many paths to becoming a parent. And knowing the options and exploring it will give you a better idea on how to proceed. So I want to thank you, Ivy of Bible, for giving me this opportunity to speak about infertility and to further raise awareness and I hope that someone out there watching this will realize that they're not alone, that infertility doesn't define them, that you matter. And there's a whole community of people out there available to support you every step of the way as you navigate your own individual journey. So I hope that uh, 2021 will bring us all closer to our desired outcomes. Thank you so much. Bye.